This is a training video of the Duplo DC 1060 collator towers. This is video number two. In our last one, we went over the modes with you. In this one, we're going to go into options. Okay, with options, you have your uh, spread, basically your shingling of the pages as they come in. If you have really thick paper running through, you're going to want to spread them out a little bit more so that they're coming through and getting under all the wheels and guides at a gradual pace instead of just coming straight through like a, you know, a big block. So you would change that, that direction. Uh, it's usually not used all that often, but you can change it if you want. That's usually if you're running a whole bunch of 10 point chrome coat or thick paper of that such. Now this uh, section here is detect, uh, detect uh, position. Basically you have six positions. You have the front of the book, uh, the middle of the book, it, on the front side of the middle of the book, and in between those two is this section right here. Then you have just past the middle of the book, in between that and the end, and the end of the book. Now you can change that, say you have a really dark color on the front half of your book, and you want to change it to the back half. Keep in mind that if you do change that, you need to change it to position that works for all ten bins on the, your uh, collator here. Now each tower is individual, but the tower itself, each of the bins are not. So when you uh, go and change that, make sure that you're not putting it in a spot where there's another dark color on one of the other pages down below, and you're just changing that for the top. Okay, detection sensitivity. This is basically how important your book is, how important the job is. And say you have pages and you started to run out of ink in it a little bit and it's faded a little bit less than the last one but it's still reading through it you can turn down the detect sensitivity so that it's not uh, kicking doubles or misses due to the fact that the ink on a couple of the pages uh, was faded a little bit now you can go all the way up. That's for a critical book. You don't want none of those pages in there. Every one of the books have to be exactly the same. Or a little bit less, just in case you know you have a book and you're not uh, it's not really that important of a book. It's going through there. You didn't want to go ahead and go back and reprint all those pages that faded. You could do that. Now on this option down here this is clutch timing now what that does is it's for your feed clutch if you look in here you have all these wheels or all these belts across there they're like rubber bands and basically it sucks the page up to that with the suction and those they feed it in now a short book is gonna need less clutch timing you could turn it up and leave it up but preferably keep it about halfway so you don't wear your clutch out any faster than you need to be. But on the longer pages, your 17 or 18 inch long books, you're gonna wanna turn the, the timing up so that it has time to feed all of that page in there. We're gonna go ahead and hit the next button and go on to this here. This is manual stitch. If you push the manual stitch button on, everything starts up. And basically, your book of makers running, your collator's running, except for you hand insert a book into here. You would put a, every time you put a book in here, it, the switch right there would trigger. Letting the, uh, the gate fingers open up, dropping the book, sending it in there, stitch, fold, trim. That's for collated jobs that you got off your copier. And you can simply turn it back off. 
you give it a second, everything will shut off, bins will lower down. Okay, DC 8000 ST Stagger Stacker. Okay, you have offset or straight stack. You can just straight collate into it, or you can off, uh, do offset basically would stagger stack your books. And then you have on or off. We have it on because this one actually happens to have one with it. Not all of them will have it. Um, it's not really important whether it's on or off if you don't have one or the setting of which one is set up for if you don't have one. But if you do have one, whatever your setting, whatever your, your job calls for, if you want to stagger stack it, you can. If you want to straight stack it, you can. Okay, hand marrying. You have two and one. Now one is your speed. Two is the machine speed. Okay, now this is the on or off button. You can actually turn it on, which all your bins would raise up. And it, if it's on your speed, then every time you drop a, a cover in here, say you have a really dark cover, the, the machine will not read, and you want to make sure you only get one cover at a time, you actually just, every time you drop a cover in here, it would send a set down to meet you. Now, two is its speed. It'll just keep feeding, and it, it won't care whether you got that cover in there or not. And it'll just continue on feeding, and you would have to try to keep up with it. Now, that's it's very hard to do that, but you do have timing that you can adjust it a little bit. You can adjust it down slower, or once you get a routine down, you can go faster. And that's how fast this set's going to, that timing is for how fast this set is going to meet your page down there. Now we're going to go ahead and hit the next button and go on to the next one. All right. This up here ejects to side when reset. All right, now you can hit reject tray, which every time you hit the reset button, uh, your first set would go down into your catch tray down here. And that way you could actually check, make sure all your pages are in the right direction, make sure all that, your pa that all your pages are there. Uh, make sure you don't have any doubles, because if it, it reads it as a double, when it feeds just one page, it's going to read it as a miss. So it is a good, uh, good to run it into your reject tray. If you decide to go with other, it's just going to send it straight into the booklet maker or stacker or whatever you have hooked up to your collator. Now buzzer sound on or off. Yes, the buzzer sound is annoying sometimes, but when something happens, you want to hear the beep. And if you're working with this machine, but you're doing other things, you're going to want to hear the beep across the room, so we always leave it on. If you turn it off, it will not beep. Okay, counter repeat. Now it's on off right now, but if you put it on on, keep in mind that when it runs your count out, it'll wait about five seconds to ten seconds and then it'll start feeding again starting that count all over so it's just a brief a moment that it stops feeding for the machine will still be running and then it'll start going it start feeding again we usually keep it on off because if you put your count in there that's what your count's going to be when your count runs out it's best to do uh, just put a new count in Okay, conveyance jam detect. Okay, say you have a bad sensor on your conveyor and you don't have uh, a new, another sensor for it, or you're waiting on the sensor to come in and you still want to, you still have jobs that you've got to get out. Now, you can turn the conveyance jam detect off. It should be on at all times unless something like that comes up. Now, the next one says stop at paper feed errors sets. Well, if you have 
on one, every time you have a double or every time you have a miss, it's going to stop the machine and you're going to have to come back here and hit the uh, run button again to make it start up. Now we put it on two, but if you have a critical job and top page has to match one of the inside pages because it has names on it, addresses on it, something like that, then you're going to want to have it on one. All right, we're going to go ahead to the next one. Okay, this is your separator. This is your fans on the inside there, the blow. Okay, one is high, three is low, two is in between. They're usually, whenever you start up your system, it's usually on one. Uh, that's basically factory setting. Everybody keeps it on one. But, say you're getting too much blow and, and you want to turn it down and you can't do adjustments with the other gui uh, guides, which we'll get into on one of the other videos, uh, you can change it down lower. Okay, now this here is your uh, detect sensitivity. Okay, what this does is you can't change this unless it's on manual. Now you can take your, say you got a thicker page, you want to change it to thick page, you can. Also, if you have really d a darker color, and you can put it on thick sometimes it'll read through it or you go back to thin or you can turn them off now if you turn them off that's only stopping the doubles it's not stopping the misses you'd have to actually go all the way to the last page which will be there in a few minutes when you are done setting to whichever setting you want you're going to want to put it back on auto because whenever you first hit reset it reads the paper and it, it has a uh, factory setting in there for thin, a factory setting for thick. And then when you put it on auto, it gives you a range between the thick uh, or the thin all the way up to a certain point. And the same with the thick, range of the thick. That way, you're not it, going by the factory setting of what it thinks thick is or what it thinks thin is. It actually reads through your paper and it says, hey, this is what he says thin is. This is the closest it's going to get to thin paper. All right, now we're going to go ahead and hit next. Descent time. Descent time is how uh, the, the bins, the way they raise up. If you have it on one, they just come from the bottom, they raise up, and then they'll start feeding, which is okay. We put them on two so that they'll go all the way up, come back down, and they come right back up. By doing that, they come up and the air is blowing and it kind of like separates some of the static from it. You're going to want it to separate the static. Backup being on is say you're done at the end of the night, you want to shut down your collator because you, you don't want anything to happen to it, you don't want it running overnight, you want to save some energy, you turn the backup on, you turn it off, the next morning when you come in and turn it on, you should be able to run your job without having to reset. It should keep all the memory in there from the uh, previous job. Now I say reset every day when you come in first thing in the morning, you reset every time you start a job. That's up to you, but it's there if you want it or if you need it. So we're going to go on to the next one. Okay, this is your miss double feed jam detects okay you can actually if you have a, a, a cover it's not reading uh, just won't read it you can turn it off or you have a, a page in there that's just not reading because there's a dark color on there you can turn it off and risk getting double double that page in there but if it's not feeding a double you can actually do that a lot of times these separate really well uh, so you could actually run it with that sensor off and then it wouldn't stop all the time all right and this will complete this video of the option portion of the Duplo DC 1060 collator tower this video was done by LCU graphics if you have any questions feel free to call thank you goodbye